this morning, we're shining a spotlight on the death of a pregnant teenager whose murder is unsolved. Savannah Soto is her name, and her boyfriend's name is Matthew Guerra. They were both found shot to death in a parked car last week. Now, police have released this surveillance video here, saying that they're searching for two persons of interest right now in their murders. And you can see in the video, if you look closely, the couple's Kia Optima, it first slowly approaches that pickup truck. Briefly, there's interaction with the driver. Somebody gets out of the Kia, but it's unclear where they go. The Kia then leaves the scene, and police are investigating this case as a capital murder. And at a press conference on December 28th, the chief of police walked the public through what we know so far. Take a look. Savannah Soto and 22-year-old Matthew uh, Guetta were reported missing by Leon Valley uh, on 12, 20, 12, 23, 23. A clear alert was issued for Savannah by DPS because it met the criteria for a clear alert to be issued. Uh, clear stands for the state's coordinated law enforcement uh, adult rescue alert program. Families of both victims reached out to SAPD on the 23rd to make a police report, but we had learned that Leon Valley had already taken a missing person report. On the 26th at about four o'clock, SAPD was called to assist Leon Valley PD at 5903 um, Danny K. Leon Valley was uh, requesting assistance. Families of both victims were at the location and reported Leon Valley PD that earlier in the day, they received information that the missing gray Kia Optima was at the Danny K address. When police arrived, they discovered two people in the Kia. Uh, EMS was called to the scene and they pronounced both victims at the scene. It appeared that the vehicle had been located in, in, at that location for several days. I mean, clearly it was a heinous act. It was, it was, you know, unspeakable, the tragedy of it. I have two great guests to help me do some analysis. Now I want to bring them in. Forensic death investigator, professor, and the host of the Body Bags podcast, Joseph Scott Morgan. And former DEA supervisory special agent, Michael Wilhite. Good morning to you gentlemen. Thank you for being on the show. I want to play a clip uh, from that same press conference and start here where the chief of police is saying this crime scene is quite complex. Let's take a listen to what he said, and I want to get your reactions and thoughts. What we're looking at right now is a very, very perplexing crime scene. And detectives right now are looking at this as a possible murder, and, uh, but we don't know for sure. So again, because of the, per, uh, the complexity, the uh, complex crime scene, uh, we can't say for sure what we have. Well, this is no doubt a head scratcher. Joseph Scott Morgan, would you kick off our conversation, please? What do you think may have happened here? It's hard to say. And uh, it, it, scenes involving vehicles are particularly complex. I think that's one of the things that he is alluding to, Julie is that if you have a motor vehicle, you essentially can have a crime scene on wheels. And I think the big question is, uh, or were both of these vehicles, or were both of these victims rather, were they actually killed in this location? Or were they killed and the vehicle with them in it was moved to said location? I think that's one of the complexities. Um, and he also is not going into a lot of detail relative to the position of the bodies. All we know is that they are in the vehicle. We don't know where they are. Uh, there was some thought early on that this could be a murder-suicide. Uh, generally, those are kind of very clearly stated. You know, when you walk up, you kind of observe these at the scene. But that's that's not the indication that we're getting here. It, it, is, it is complex, to say the least. 
Right. Uh, Joseph, uh, thank you for that. And, and I'm glad you brought up that point about how some are questioning this and saying, could it have been uh, a suicide? And Savannah Soto's mother spoke out adamantly against this, uh, talking to station KSAT saying, and I'm quoting exactly, quote, this is not like her. She was so excited to have this <clears throat> baby. The house was already baby ready. There was no reason why she would just get up and go off and do that. Savannah knows what I I went through with Ethan and I know she doesn't want me to go through this again uh, referencing the death of her younger brother and so with that being said uh, Michael Wilhite let me go to you here please we know some are wondering could this have been drug related certainly you're an expert uh, in narcotics having served so many years with the DEA tell me is there anything about this case that says drug trafficking or something relating to drugs to you Everything about this case speaks of drug trafficking, drug related. Um, I think before there was a photo of of, of, of uh, Matthew holding um, a chunk of a, a wise of uh, money, um, um, jewelry. I think he was holding up a gang sign too. Um, everything about this case thinks of drug trafficking in the area. Um, I think that also there was, uh, I think it was an incidents where I think he was arrested on some charges too before. So there could be an incident where, you know, he he uh, tried to make a deal, place a deal to get out that, that case because he wanted to see his child born um, and somebody retaliated. So everything about this speaks of drug trafficking. I've spent uh, <clears throat> 30 plus years of law enforcement, state and, local, state and federal. Uh, 23 of that is with the Drug Enforcement Administration, and everything about this case speaks of drug trafficking. Wow. Uh, Michael Wilhite, I want, I want to say, tell me more, tell me more when you're saying that. I mean, this just seems so sad. Do you think, as a follow-up question to you, please, do you think that Savannah Soto and her unborn baby could have been collateral damage, so to speak, if she was with her boyfriend and not actively trafficking, but if he were the trafficker and someone was retaliating, uh, could that be the case for her death? From my experience, um, the girls that are involved in, that are dealing with, uh, are involved with drug traffickers, they themselves might not be the primary trafficker, but they're definitely reaping the benefits of that lifestyle. The mere fact that whatever happened that night or that day, that the, the warrant the killing of, um, of Matthew, obviously the, the, the killers could not leave a witness and she was a witness. She was part of that lifestyle. Whether or not she actually sold drugs, participated in it, she was part of that lifestyle. And she was there at the time that uh, he was there. So what I'm saying, she definitely knew the lifestyle that, she, that he was involved in. She accepted that lifestyle. So, you know, the birds of a feather flock together. Michael, this is really illuminating. It's sad that, uh, yes. it's, it's sad that uh, of course, you know, his lifestyle or their lifestyle end up uh, costing the life of an unborn child. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Joseph Scott Morgan, uh, back to you. Um, let's say that these vehicles were moved, as you said before, that, you know, maybe the killing happened at one location. And then how do you as an investigator uh, backtrack and figure out where where the killing occurred so that you can maybe gather evidence from that scene, maybe surveillance cameras in the area, something like that? Tell me kind of what you do, please. Uh, well, obviously, surveillance CCTV is going to be your, you know, your fallback position here, but also um, certainly any kind of uh, cellular devices that were on these individuals uh, when, if they had them on them inside of this vehicle, and if this vehicle has some kind of tracking system where they could have followed it. But Julie, if I could make one point oh, here please, uh, please, that, goes, that goes to my colleague's point relative to drug involvement, I'm very fascinated about the cause and manner of death here. Um, and when you begin to think about the male subject, the one thing that we know about his injuries, Julie, is that the ME is referring to his cause of death as a single, not multiple, but a single gunshot wound to the head. And not only is it a gunshot wound, uh, Julie, they're saying this is a contact 
gunshot wound. And just kind of let me break this down for you. This is a dummy weapon that we use here at JSU in training. But if this is a contact event, that means that the muzzle, the end of the muzzle with this weapon would literally have to be in contact with his head when this thing was discharged, okay? What does that tell us? Well, it tells us proximity, right? You know, there had to be some physical contact between the perpetrator and the victim, the male victim in particular. This is not something that's done at a great distance. So this is somebody that has familiarity, somebody that is skilled, because if it's only a single gunshot wound, this is not something that's over the top where you got a lot of overkill involving him. This is efficiency, okay? And if this is involved with some kind of tangential, you know, drug trafficking or something like this, that would go to that violent lifestyle. So I, I'm really curious about that. And did this occur in the vehicle at this location? Uh, were the windows down in the car? Because, you know, I've worked a lot of cases involving shootings and cars and people are shot through windows, sometimes random. You'll get, you know, glass that is blasted inside of the car. We don't know that yet. But the fact, the fact that they are saying that this is a contact gunshot wound to his head speaks volumes here. This is not some kind of randomized event.